yourself. Examining a game like Little Nightmares is tricky. Even with a level of experience and even fandom toward puzzle platformer games, I still find it to be difficult to dissect. This isn't because its subject matter is controversial, but more because there aren't many concrete ideas to explore. Little Nightmares is hesitant to allow discussion of itself. It's dense, brooding, packed with questions, but no desire to answer them. Little Nightmares wants to keep the player guessing, even in its liveliest of moments, but that's actually why it works so well. As a small, raincoat-clad character named Six, you awaken in a dark, foreboding vessel called the Maw. Within the game, however, the only bit of background is an ethereal cutscene of a masked figure before quickly cutting to gameplay. Many games have adopted a similar approach to their first acts. Most recognizably, Play Dead's Limbo and Inside, two of Little Nightmare's easiest comparisons. They hurl the player into a world that's both haunting and captivating without a trace of explanation. But Little Nightmares is especially stubborn in giving the player any additional background to utilize. Even the most cryptic of games are able to provide direction, as the objective ultimately guides their actions and establishes boundaries to their mechanics. But for some reason, Little Nightmares isn't content with such a philosophy. Few moments encapsulate this mentality better than Little Nightmare's introductory phase. It's presented in such a subdued way, silently inviting the player into its world with ambiance and mood, but without revealing any of its secrets. There's an especially eerie scene early in the game where the player enters a room to see legs from a humanoid creature hanging down from the ceiling. The easiest assumption is that this is a victim of hanging, but the chair is not tall enough, leaving the figure's fate unknown. This moment is never elaborated upon, or even given the bare minimum of explanation as the game progresses. It stands silent, perfectly setting the tone and personal goal that Little Nightmare seeks to achieve. The question of the victim is never contextualized. Several minutes in, the first autonomous threat appears. Slimy creatures swarm and ensnare the player, establishing the setting as something thick with peril. It's here that the first major context is presented, and the objective is fully established. The goal is to find safety from a dangerous setting. It's simple and a bit underdeveloped, but this pushes the player to continue through each challenge, dodging hazards and solving puzzles. The only goal is to escape, and that's the one fact that the player can rely on from a gameplay standpoint. I brought up these two moments not just because they're exceptional tone setters, but also that these moments are left inconclusive. They have no answers, no explanation to uncover their secrets leaving the player with visceral visuals to ponder, but no way to decipher them. Unlike in other games, progression doesn't attain the relief of knowledge. These moments stand alone in their own isolation, and they don't leave the psyche easily. This is a very subtle approach for the developers to take, a way to guide and entice the player by preserving the world's mystery. And Little Nightmares never dispels that mystery. Even once the threats have more concrete forms, the player's only directions are instinctual, to escape from an immediate threat. The hazards themselves steadily gather more visceral forms, taking on human-like shapes, but with distorted and gruesome aesthetics. But even when the monsters have faces, the player is still left without assurance. Six is defenseless, ignorant of why the creatures are chasing her and why the world of the Maw is containing her. But Little Nightmares, instead of steadily introducing backstory or lore as the game progresses, remains cryptic. It doesn't share answers, even as it reaches its endgame. The best set pieces in Little Nightmares are ones where the solution isn't a cerebral one, but a primal one. Running to evade a chasing danger or sneaking past a guard. These demand impulsive actions and offer little time to think. Because of this, Little Nightmares is a game that doesn't reward learning about its world. In most cases, it discourages the player from doing so. It aims to preserve its own mystery. I noticed that when a game like Little Nightmares is released, the gaming community begins to make theories as to what each moment means. They try to take what little context is there and do their best to derive meaning from it. Really, it's a catharsis, a way for the player to comfort themselves in times of confusion. But Little Nightmares does everything to make these efforts fruitless. The strife for understanding each scene becomes an ordeal, and we're ultimately left with ideas that are half-composed at best, leaving all of the doors open. But this is why Little Nightmares holds value to me, the fact that it lacks answers. 
It holds the simple objective of escape as its cornerstone to propel the player forward, but doesn't elaborate it any further. It displays gruesome enemies and hazards, but treats them as autonomous obstacles, not developed characters. It gives the protagonist an identifiable design, but without revealing their face. Everything that Little Nightmare says as an artistic artifact is expressed to a small minimum, while leaving the details out whenever possible. Little Nightmares removes context in order to make a statement. It shows the value of mystery, the appeal of the unknown, and I think that's so much more interesting than a story that ties up every loose end. Little Nightmares aims to decontextualize itself. It provides a slim framework for its structure and rarely adds on to it. But this is a game direction that succeeds. Without answers, players are kept vulnerable, and Little Nightmares builds upon this vulnerability. It capitalizes on confusion, leaving questions hanging all the way to its end credits. It's a design mentality that encourages the player to stop digging for truths and simply to remain in eerie ignorance, no matter how terrifying it may seem. The Maw is an ocean of intrigue, but Six and the player lack the ingenuity to make sense of it all. This is why I think Little Nightmares goes where other games like it don't, and why I continue to think about it, even this long after its completion.